Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining MSAC for our 2021 uh, info webinar for Poetry Out Loud. My name is Precious Blake. I am the Arts and Education Program Director and Accessibility Coordinator. We are also joined today by Kat Frost, who is our Grants Management Arts Education Associate. She will be helping with technical concerns and any chat box questions that pop up. So to ground ourselves today, I have two amazing videos I'd like to share that really shows the power of the arts in Maryland and poetry. So hopefully this video works. If it doesn't, please somebody let me know. <laughs> Let's stop and try that again. Let's try this. We are still here. We're dancing and designing. We're sculpting and singing. We're reading and writing. We're painting and playing. We're creating. We are Maryland artists and we are ready and waiting. That's a little tidbit about the amazing artists in Maryland. And now I'd love to share a video of our reigning 2020 Poetry Out Loud champion, Randolph Smith. Is My Team Plowing by A. E. Hausman. Is My Team Plowing that I was used to drive and hear the harness jingle when I was man alive. I, the horses trample, the harness jingles now. No change that you lie under the land you used to plow. Is football playing along the river shore with lads to chase the leather? Now I stand up no more. I, the ball is flying. The lads play heart and soul. The goal stands up, the keeper stands up to keep the goal. Is my girl happy that I fought hard to leave? And has she tired of weeping as she lies down at eve? Aye, she lies down lightly. She lies not down to weep. Your girl is well contented. Be still, my lad in sleep. Is my friend hearty? Now I am thin and pine. And has he found to sleep in a better bed than mine? Yes, lad, I lie easy. I lie as lads would choose. I cheer a dead man's sweetheart. Never ask me who's. <laughs> That's our reigning champion. He's affectionately called Randy. So all the praise and amazingness for him too. So I just wanna go over some using Google Meet controls if you're not already familiar. So the chat box is in the upper right-hand corner of your meeting screen. You will find the tab for the chat box there. Chat messages will be displayed for all attendees. So throughout this presentation, if you have any questions, please add them to the chat box and we'll be able to get to them in chronological order when we do Q&A. All URLs from this presentation will also be placed in the chat box. So if I refer to going to a website, it'll be there. Um, and this is also being recorded. And so this recording will show up on msac.org. 
To mute or resume your audio, you hit the mute button on the bottom left of center of your screen. To pause resume video, you hit the video button on the bottom right of center. And changing your display. So most of our time today will be through screen share. You should click the three dots on the bottom right hand corner to change your display settings. It allows you to divide your meeting screen to see active speakers, all participants, and or the presentation at once. You can also turn on closed captions at the bottom right of your screen. The live caption will differentiate which attendee is speaking. Please note that we cannot guarantee accuracy for the computer generated closed captioning. And if you need to leave the meeting at any point, you can press the phone icon at the bottom center of your screen. Poetry Out Loud, this is where we are today. So Poetry Out Loud is a national arts education program that encourages the study of great poetry by offering free educational materials and a dynamic recitation competition to high schools across the country. And by performing poetry, students can master public speaking skills, build confidence, and learn more about literary history and contemporary life. To encourage the nation's youth to learn about great poetry, the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Poetry Foundation jointly support Poetry Out Loud. And state arts agencies across the nation also produce and implement the program. The NEA creates the poem anthology, supplemental lesson plans, the judging criteria, overall um, Poetry Out Loud competition structure, and produces the national competition. Now, Poetry Out Loud's uh, reach is pretty expansive. So since 2005, Poetry Out Loud has reached more than 3.6 million students and 55,000 teachers from 14,000 schools nationwide. The state arts agencies in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands have enlisted high schools to participate in the Poetry Out Loud program. And the anthology of poems, you know, students select, memorize, and recite the poems from an anthology that is produced by and published by the NEA. It has more than 900 classic and contemporary poems. Now, there are plenty of student stipends and awards. The NEA themselves provide each winner at the state level $200. And when the competition was in person, an all-expenses-paid trip with an adult chaperone to Washington, D.C. to compete at nationals. Um, we will be transitioning into a virtual competition this year, so the expenses paid trip is not happening for 2021. The state winner school from the NEA receives $500 for the purchase of poetry materials as well. The first runner-up for each state receives $100 with the $200 for their school. MSAC also provides additional regional awards and a state champion award. The Maryland State winner receives could receive up to $1,500 in state funds and NEA award money. At nationals, a total of $50,000 in awards and school stipends are awarded annually. Now for this year, because we know that we are virtual, we want to give students, educators, and poetry lovers all of the opportunities and pathways and avenues to access the competition. So there are many Poetry Out Loud lesson plans that support classroom instruction, but the NEA has given us this agency to broaden our constituency in our competition. So the most traditional way, which is how Poetry Out Loud has usually been run is through the school avenue, so either public or private. So at the classroom level, students must prepare at least one poem to recite, whether as a recorded video or they recite it during a live virtual classroom experience. At the school-wide level, students then must prepare two poems to recite as a recorded video or live. The top school-wide winner for this year and the runner-up, so this is new. So in the past, we would only need the school-wide uh, top winner to compete at regionals. But now this year, we want both the school-wide winner and the runner-up to submit videos to pre-regional competition. 
And they will have to submit two videos each for two different poems. Now at the community organization level, so these are nonprofits, after school clubs, you know, it could be any body of folks. Our county arts agencies are considered community organizations too. Any type of body of people, uh, theaters as well, if you have a theater group or you have an after school program for students, you are considered in this bracket. And this will mirror the school experience. So on a small group level, so it's not classroom level, but small group level, students will prepare one poem to recite and they'll do it either recorded or live. And then they'll move to an organization wide level where the students have to prepare at least two poems to recite, whether recorded or live. And we will ask organizations just like we ask for schools to determine an organization wide winner and runner up who will both be input into pre-regional competition. And we'll get into the specifics of pre-regionals very soon. Now, we also know that there may be some really dedicated students that maybe don't have a teacher or a dedicated um, theater professor or a theater practitioner or artist that wants to host a competition for them. So independent students can also just go straight through and bypass all of this. And so the only thing that they would do is they would submit two poetry recitation videos at pre-regionals. Now, when at uh, the regional, state, and national finals, students will have to submit three poems to record on video. And so the poem has to be 25 lines or fewer, one of them at least, and one must be written before the 20th century. All of this is in the Poetry Out Loud teacher toolkit. And so if you want a teacher toolkit, either electronically or physically, please register so we can get your mailing address and we can send it to you. I see that there's some chat box activity. Kat, if you can just capture those questions, we'll get to those at the very end. Thank you so much. And another note, so eligibility on grade bands. So Poetry Out Loud is for high school students, so students in ninth to 12th grade. There is an exception for eighth grade students that are taking ninth to 12th grade uh, classes, so they can compete. We also wanna make sure that whichever pathway a, choose, a student chooses, they have to choose one. So if you are a school or if you are a community organization, please ensure your student is also not registering independently <laughs> or vice versa. If they're in a school and then they're also competing with a community organization, well, that is not allowed for this year. So registration. So what does the timeline look like? So right now we are in registration phase. So that's August 26th, that's when registration opened to November 2nd. Uh, registration is basically your intent to submit a video for competition consideration. So we just wanna get a overall view of who is interested so we can give you communication, share information with you and prepare you as best as possible for success. Now, once you have registered, you will receive information from the Arts and Education Office about pre-regionals, which is virtual. Could the slides be larger? Sure. This will also be shared and the PowerPoints will be available on our website. Sweet, okay. So at pre-regional, so around November 15th, where that's our target date, a Smart Simple, which is our grant application platform, it's a video submission portal, and it will be live and open for all previous registrants to submit videos for consideration. The portal will be open until January 1st. So this means that if you are an organization or a school hosting a competition, you have until January 1st to execute your competition choose your top two students and have those top two students submit their recitation videos. So you have all of the fall and a little bit of winter. The videos must be separate. So it needs to be one video reciting one poem and then another video reciting another poem. And we'll talk about what that looks like uh, later on. Now at 
Now from pre-regionals, three regions will be determined and the top 12 students will move forward to compete for each region. That is 36 students in total that will be selected for a regional competition. The, then the top three students per region will then move on to the state competition. And from the top nine, a state champion will be announced. Now, there are several different ways that a video can be submitted. So, and we'll get into what the student supports look like, but they can either submit a homemade video or set up a recording appointment with the Maryland State Arts Council. And we'll talk about that soon. Now, the state competition will be happening on March 9th, and both the, the state competition will be live streamed in real time, and so will the regional competitions. So there will be an interactive component and a virtual audience is encouraged. Now, as a note, Poetry SLs is a additional component to the Poetry Out Loud competition. For this year, we are suspending poetry ourselves. Um, if you or your students are interested in submitting original poetry on a state competition level for this year, please reach out to the Baltimore Office of Promotion in the Arts to register for the Maryland Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards. Now, student and educator extended learning and support. So we understand that implementing a Poetry Out Loud curriculum for teachers and providing adequate individual support may be a challenge this year. So MSAC is offering three different ways we can support students and educators who wanna be involved. So coming up is our November Poetry Masterclasses run through MSDE's office through their uh, professional learning program. The masterclasses will model poetry recitation tips, discuss ways to effectively embody the judging criteria, and connect learning goals and standards to selected poems. These classes are meant for student participation, but educators and organizations can also attend to gain more understanding. We are also launching winter rehearsal hours and coaching opportunities for regional and state competitors. Rehearsal hours are opportunities for students to practice reciting their poems, uh, rather reciting three poems with a teaching artist before submitting a video for regional and state competition um, consideration. The teaching artists and or the coaches will provide feedback that will be hopefully helpful for the student. We highly encourage independent students to attend the master classes and take advantage of winter rehearsal hours. Rehearsal hours will be limited and we will prioritize independent students. If you want to implement any suggested lesson plans or other Poetry Out Loud supporting materials, you can find them at poetryoutloud.org. And we are also offering a tech stipend or professional videotaping appointments for regional and state competitors. So we know that technology can be a barrier and getting high quality video for you know, a regional competition or a national competition or a state competition rather can be challenging for folks that maybe are just working on their, their cell phones. So all the regional competitors and state competitors will be offered two options. Really, it's three. So A, they could just submit their own video on their own time and opt out of having any support. B, they could ask for a tech stipend from MSAC. And that can be used to rent a camera, or maybe there's a trusted friend or a colleague, or maybe there is a trusted videographer that they know that they want to pay for to videotape the student. Or if they want to do socially distanced, in-person professional videotaping appointments with MSAC, we will take that and set that up with the regional and state competitors. Now, there are several NEA filming requirements that I wanted to go through today. And there are some other poetry recitation tips I'd like to go through too. So things to keep in mind is to film in a horizontal orientation, not vertical. Face the camera so it captures your head mid-torso and up, so it's a medium shot. Each recitation should be filmed in one single shot from one static angle. 
The sound and picture must be clear. No editing is allowed. Do not add music, graphics, titles, virtual backgrounds that includes blurring or computer animation. Now the use of professional recording studios is prohibited for students, but the, the state arts agencies, we are allowed to use that to support the students. So for video submission contests, each recitation requires its own separate video. So that means it shouldn't be one video where the student is reciting three poems in one take. We want separate videos for each individual poem. The students must begin by stating the title of the poem, the, po the poet's name rather, and the translator if applicable. This is very similar to how it happens in person. And a student's own editorial comments before or after the poem are not allowed. They can just begin. There's no, thank you for being here. My name is, you don't have to do that. And poems must be recited from memory. Now tips for making an even greater poetry recitation video is really all you need is a camera. So you can use your laptop, it can be a phone, it can be a digital camera, it can be a camcorder. Do not shoot handheld. If you can, use a book or a chair or a tripod to prop up the, the camera. The student should be standing. And if possible, a plugged in microphone is great, but if you can't, that's okay. Just place the camera as close to the student as possible. Listen to the recording during and after the recording to make sure it's what you wanna submit. <laughs> Uh, and no school insignia or graphics or any types of clues to the school's identity. Now students may look directly into the camera at a fixed spot or at an imagined audience. And make sure the student's the only person visible and audible in the video. It's helpful if you start recording a few seconds before the recitation starts and stop recording a few seconds after the end too. So you get the full breadth of the, the tape. It's also helpful to film yourself in front of a blank or neutral wall and not in front of a window, which can make you look really dark and in the shadow uh, with, or any distracting backgrounds. Kind of like what the NEA says, like no <laughs> intense things happening in the background. Try to avoid wearing clothing with similar colors to the background as well. So contrasting colors are really helpful. The camera does not need to pan or zoom in at any point. And no one's voice besides the students should be heard. Just the students themselves should be heard. And if a student forgets a line or makes a mistake, you can just start the recitation again. So stop recording and then do it over. This is something that doesn't get to happen in person. So you can take several takes if you need it. And once again, the poem should be recorded separately and submitted as separate videos at pre-regional, regional, and states level. Now for submission, and this we'll talk about this, and this will be sent to the folks that register, large video files can take a long time to upload on Smart Simple. So if you can, we encourage you to upload your videos to a personal YouTube or Vimeo page as a backup. Now, if you want to see some amazing examples of some recitation videos, you can go to Poetry Out Loud's YouTube page for an example. So the videos that I showed you earlier with uh, Randolph, that was recorded by a professional, but this is recorded by the student themselves at home. So let's listen and see what choices she makes to um, make a really great recitation video. The Kiss by Robert Graves. Are you shaken? Are you stirred by a whisper of love? Spellbound to a word? Does time cease to move till her calm gray eye expands to the sky and the clouds of her hair like storms go by? Then the lips that you have kissed turn to frost and fire and a white steaming mist obscures desire. So back to the earth, fade, water, air, earth. And the first power moves over void and dirt. 
Is that love? No. But death, a passion, a shout, the deep in-breath, the breath roaring out. And once that is flown, you must lie alone without hope, without life, poor flesh, sad bones. And that was recorded by the student. Lovely. So are you interested in hosting a local competition or submitting a video for pre-regionals? Here are your next steps. Please register now. <laughs> it's really important so you can stay in our communication streams. This is your intent to submit a video. It doesn't mean that you need to have a video prepared. It doesn't mean you even started introducing this to your students yet. It just means that you plan to. Now, if you are hosting a competition, we encourage you to read the teacher organizer guide and the uh, Poetry Out Loud anthology. If you know of any independent students, we encourage them to dive deep into the anthology as well, choose some poems and start practicing. And for everyone, please look out for the master classes and rehearsal hours. We hope to share registration very, very soon for those master classes, and they will be of great support and help for everyone. Now, if you're interested in being a coach or a judge, we do have a call for coaches and judges. They will be compensated at all levels. So if you are chosen as a judge for the regionals or for a state, you will be compensated. And so we'll judge. <laughs> so first, if you're interested, read the 2020, 2021 judges guide that actually was just released recently. The 2019, 21 is still accurate too. We ask you to watch several recitation videos, but one is just enough, just so you can kind of understand the ethos and the general overall feel of poetry out loud. You'll then make a smart, simple account. It's super easy to do. It's at marylandarts.smartsimple.com. And what you'll do is that you'll go under funding opportunities, select public call, and you'll, se you'll select being a Poetry Out Loud judge or coach. You cannot do both, so you have to choose. <laughs> and from the drop-down options, you'll just click Save Draft to start populating your application. It's super simple. I think there's like three questions. We don't ask for too much. We just want to really get as much support and as much interest as possible. So that is the overall look and feel and overall things of Poetry Out Loud. I wanted to make sure that we have enough time for general questions, suggestions, and clarifications. Kat, I know that you've been monitoring the chat box. Would you share some questions that folks have had? Yes. So the first question was about the slideshow being shared. Yes, the PowerPoint and the recording of today's video will be on msac.org after today. Are community orgs and individual students only being included during COVID times? That is a really great question. I think that right now we want to see how effective it works. And hopefully if we get enough support and um, the NEA sees how much support and energy and excitement it's been, including community arts organizations and independent students, they'll allow us to continue doing it. Uh the chat for the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts uh, Scholastic Writing Awards was dropped in the chat. The next question was, at what level can scholars recite their own original work? Was that changed? So for this, so Poetry Ourselves has always been a completely separate competition and not integrated into Poetry Out Loud. So at the national level, there is a Poetry Ourselves, but not every state does Poetry Ourselves. Many states realize, you know, there are other communities, organizations that are maybe investing in poetry in different ways. And so not every state is required to do poetry ourselves. Because this year we are making some major shifts 
into a virtual competition, we decided to suspend it for this year. If we find that folks were craving it and we shouldn't have suspended it, but we needed to for our own staff capacity, we'll bring it back next year once we're on some more solid ground. Are coaches paid or provided a stipend? Yes and yes. If we are helping with a local competition, are we allowed to apply to be a judge? Um, Miranda McLean, I know that you made that suggestion. Can you define what you mean by helping? <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> um, I'm working with another teacher to run the school competition. Um, so kind of, I guess, being a judge at that level. So I, I'm thinking probably wouldn't be allowed, but I'm just curious. Sure, yeah, I just wanted to make sure, yes, if you are directly involved in any school competition, no, you cannot be a judge or a coach. Okay, I figured, but just wanted to check, thank you. Yeah, no problem, it's just for impartiality. All right, I think those are all the chat box questions. Are there any overarching Poetry Out Loud questions or other ways that MSAC can support you if you're really interested in doing Poetry Out Loud this year? Valerie, I see your hand. Great, sorry, I couldn't type fast enough. And I realized I was muted the first time I said that. Um, <laughs> so in that regard, we have one of our ensemble members who has been tasked by the NEA to record some how-to videos for Poetry Out Loud. So I am under the assumption then that that ensemble member of ours, it would be kind of unethical to have them serve as a judge. Is, um, But I didn't know at what level, like mm. could he then therefore be a coach? Because I know that he he was selected as the national uh, artist in residence, or I don't know the official title, but I know that he was paid a sum to uh, film some things for the NEA directly, um, directly used supposedly for Poetry Out Loud. I'm talking about Reggie Kabiko. <laughs> Okay, so, so I think it would be helpful if maybe we talk to, um, if we talk to Lauren, who is the Poetry Out Loud coordinator, and just figure out what NEA stance is, especially since they're working, Reggie's working directly with the NEA. So right. if the NEA says it's fine, then it's fine with us too. Because I just want to make sure that we're not, and, and I just want to make sure that we're not taking advantage of a cross-pollination situation but if I, but if he can be of some educational benefit to the students of our state, right. then there's also that. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And so I think that we can connect with the NEA okay. to confirm because that's a great question. So all right. Thank you so much. Sure. Of course. Karen added in the chat, any rough idea of anticipated number of entrants? Sure, so because we are hoping to choose 36 students for regionals, we're hoping that we get at least more than 36 students to submit videos for pre-regional consideration. So, you know, for example, if we were able to get you know, 30 schools and community organizations, that would be 60 students because we're asking two students from each organization to submit a video. So hopefully we get more than 36. So, you know, the pre-regional judges at that point, they have folks to choose from. <laughs> it's not just the automatic students. Um, and then from that 36, it goes to nine and then it goes to one. So roughly around 60, um, students, but it could be as little as 30 registrants itself, of course. So if you know of anybody who knows of anybody who's interested in Poetry Out Loud, please, please share the registration because we really want this to be an opportunity for students to participate in ways they never have been before. Plus independent students, yes. So if you 
have someone in your circle or students you know of, it would be amazing for them to be a part of this opportunity. Great. Are there any other questions about poetry ourselves? I'm sorry, poetry out loud. <laughs> Davina just added, what is the definition of independent student? And can students send videos even if their school is sending to candidates? Thank you, Davina, that's a great question. So no, so if their school is hosting a competition, they need to be a part of that competition. <laughs> if no one in their school building is hosting a competition, but the student is so passionate about poetry out loud, they are considered an independent student, meaning they don't have a sponsor. They don't have a teacher. There is not someone at a theater organization or a literary organization that's hosting a competition that they can be a part of. A lot of times homeschool students take this route. A lot of them have already because they just don't have those connections. So any student that cannot go into a competition that is hosted by a teacher or a community organization is considered independent. I have a question. Yeah. Um, and this might sound stupid, but if we're hosting <laughs> at our school, our scholars will submit videos to us and we, as the judge or in conjunction with another staff member, will select that winner. Are those the same videos then that we would forward to the pre-regional or do they record a different poem? So it could be the same videos or they could re-record their video if they want to. So if the student's like, eh, there are some things I could work on, let me record it one more time. We actually give that opportunity between pre-regional to regional to state. So the students could submit their videos in different ways. So in the original competition, you know, students would say poem A, B, and C is the order in which they do their poems. But at regional level, they want to switch it around and do B, C, A. We want to give students that flexibility as well in a virtual setting. So it's up to you and it's up to the student. No such thing as a stupid question. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So once again, um, Kat, if you can just put in the chat the link to registration. If you aren't already registered, please register. We It's open until November 2nd and we'll be sharing some marketing tips too, but we really would encourage you to so you can be the first to know when the master class is open. So that's one thing. You'll be the first to know once they, they are open. Um, you'll also be able to get first access to winter rehearsal hours because we are going to be sending information about that to registrants first. And then for folks that want to register later, we'll send it to them later. So thank you everyone so much. If there are no further questions, then we're good to go. If you have any reflections about this webinar, please feel free to email it to us at msac.commerce at maryland.gov or just send it directly to, to me, Precious Blake. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, our emails are going to be shared on the screen right here. So any questions, conversations, please feel free to reach out to us. We are super excited for Poetry Out Loud this year. It's so expanded in so many different ways that we really want to encourage more participation than we ever have in the past. Yes. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much. This recording will be available in a couple days. Please look out for it. We'll send an email to all of the registrants after today. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful night and a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you. Bye, ladies. Have a great afternoon.